Okay, so we're gonna start with the liquid trials first. I'm gonna show you one trial of each, even though we're performing three, just so it doesn't get repetitive. And we're gonna start by measuring 10 milliliters of each liquid and weighing that on the scale. But like last lab, we have to make sure we don't consider the weight of the glassware. So we're gonna first weigh this empty. Now, last time what we would have done was recorded this weight that we see here and then recorded the weight of the glassware when it's full. But what we're going to do today is something that's a lot easier. Since this number doesn't really matter in our math, we can do something called tearing or zeroing out the weight. So now this glassware essentially weighs nothing. And since we don't want to pour any liquids over the analytical balance, I am going to take it off the scale to fill up. We're going to fill to our 10 milliliters. Go ahead and record that volume. Now, if you look on the balance, we can see that it is a negative value for mass. That's because nothing's on the scale. It is still keeping in mind the mass of this glassware. So when we put it on the scale, it is only going to show us the mass of our liquid that is inside. So now we'll move on and do our other liquid trials. All right, so now we're moving on to the other two liquids in our set. We have acetonitrile here and ethyl alcohol or ethanol, um, the two common names of that. So we're gonna start with acetonitrile. And last time we had teared for our specific glassware. If you notice, this number is negative from the last piece of glassware they put, but it's important to note that not all glassware is the same. So I have a different graduated cylinder here that weighs a different amount, which makes sense, but some students can get confused and they'll just assume that all glassware weighs the same. So we have to tear each time we do this. We wanna make sure it weighs exactly zero here. Then we can take this out. Now we can pour our 10 mils here. And since I don't have the nice squirt bottle for the seed and nitrile, I can take a disposable pipette and get that precision that I need. The thing is we are aiming for 10 milliliters of each, but if we don't exactly get it, that is the volume we want to record. So I'm sitting at 10 here, so I'm gonna say 10.00 milliliters, but if I were off by any amount, I would record out to 10.02, 10.01, whichever was the best. One thing that's also important to note on the analytical balance is you have these doors that slide. Whenever you're weighing or taking the mass of something, you want these doors shut because they rely on airflow and different things like that. So this will make your most accurate mass assessment here. And you also wanna be careful not to lean on the tables. As you can see, once I lean my hands here, the mass is going to change. These are balanced very specifically. So if there's anything outside uh, messing with it, you can get some improper results. And a lot of people like to lean while they write on the tables and that can uh, damage your accuracy. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to ethyl alcohol. Same thing here, I just have to tear again because this is a different piece of glassware. And even if it were the same, we always wanna tear it because we're not sure what could have happened in the drying process. Could be some leftover water droplets and things like that. So you always wanna tear before each measurement.
side. So I went a little bit over the 10 milliliter line here. So we're gonna say that's about 10.03 milliliters. And it's okay that we're not exactly there. The point is to measure the density. So as long as I'm reporting the volume accurately, having the a slightly off volume is okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and move over to our solid here, our solids. We're gonna fill out these uh, second and third trials for you, and then you'll have a complete data table to go off of. All right, so now we have our solids. We're trying to measure the density of three different solids, aluminum, copper, and brass. So we are going to do this slightly differently than we did with our liquids here. As you can see, all the different metals are different shapes. So we have the aluminum, which is a little bit more round, whereas the copper and the brass are rod cylindrical shapes. Now, if um, what we talked about in the beginning of the lab, you can measure the volume of something by generalizing its shape and computing an equation for you know, the volume of a sphere or an elliptical or a cylinder. But the problem is these are really organic shapes. So if we assume that it is an exact sphere or elliptical, we're gonna miss a lot of the cracks and crevices of these. So what we can do is use the displacement of water to account for everything and get an overall more accurate volume. So what we need to do first is start out with at least 10 grams of our solid. I'm only gonna show you uh, weighing out the aluminum, but we've done the same exact process for the copper and the brass. So just as we did with our glassware, we need to use a weigh boat so that we make no contact with the analytical balance. We're going to zero it out so we don't count the weight or the mass of the weigh boat. And now I'm going to use a scopula, this thing here, to get approximately 10 grams, give or take, of the metal. And the reason I can leave the weigh boat on the balance is because it's not liquid, so if I were to spill any, it would not harm the balance. Plus, it's nice because I'm able to approximate as I go. Okay, so we have 9.8 here. I'm gonna shut the door so it can accurately measure. That's approximately 10, so I'm gonna record this mass. You might have some trials above 10 grams, you might have some below. As long as you're close to it, it's okay. So now what we need to do is measure the displacement. So I'm gonna fill this up with some water, enough that's going to cover the aluminum pellets here. And it doesn't have to be any specific, but what I'm going to do is make sure that I can read the volume of what I've put in. So I've put in 11 milliliters as the initial volume. Now I'm going to pour these down. And as you can see, the water level changed here. So we're gonna record the new volume, which is sitting at, if you can see, it's gonna be 14. <laughs> Fourteen point seven nine. All right, so now that we've measured out the aluminum, we're gonna switch over to the copper here. Um, take note, you wanna record what each thing looks like, its shape, so copper is going to look different than brass, different things like that. Uh, it may not seem crazy important as you're going on, but it can help um, in your analysis later. So again, I've put just enough to cover our metals here. And it's gonna be 
6.54 for our initial volume of copper. And one thing that's really important when you're doing an experiment is you, everyone is going to estimate. What you wanna make sure is that the same person is recording within the same experiment, so you have the same amount of estimation happening, because you might read this value differently than I will, but if I've recorded all of these values, it's going to be more accurate overall. So that's one thing you wanna note when you're doing uh, work with a partner. And another thing, the aluminum is a little bit lighter, less dense, so they're not gonna be as harmful. So for these uh, cylindrical rods, we want to kind of tilt and slide them down so as not to damage the glassware. And a nice thing that happens too, you can probably see the bubbles that are coming up. One thing you wanna make sure is that all the air bubbles are out of the water once you've recorded, because if there's bubble trapped in the bottom, that's gonna increase the volume, even though that shouldn't be measured. So we've got all the air bubbles out, now we can go ahead and record. So, if you want to take a second and try for yourself. So I would say that's going to be 7.7 .7 milliliters. So it will be recorded as 7.70 .7 milliliters, since we have to go out the two decimal places. Uh, another thing to note when you're reading glassware is you want to make sure you understand the different graduations in between. because Compared to what we had for the aluminum, this had different graduations than this 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. So if I use the same, uh, the graduations as the same spacing, it's not going to be the same measurements. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with brass. We've already measured out our approximately 10 grams. Good, and record our initial volume. I'll say that's 6.19 millimeters. No air bubbles, and now we can go ahead and take our volume again. So I'd say we're at 7.40. Alrighty, and that is our experiment there. We're gonna go ahead and do the other trials for you and get you that data. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to calculate everything. So the ethanol, and the acetonitrile are gonna go into our liquid hazardous waste bins here. Now we can clean this glassware like normal. So the last important thing in between trials that we want you guys to know about is you need to make sure your metals are all dried off. So the easiest way to do that is to decant the water here, which means you're gonna basically pour until you have very little water left over, but you don't wanna pour out your metals. Then we're gonna drop the metal onto a paper towel. And this is just a good practice for proper lab procedure. You wanna do the experiment well, but you also wanna make sure you put everything away properly. So we're gonna make these, make sure these are dried really nicely. Um, this was just water, so it was fine to go down the sink, but again, we want to pour things like acetyl nitrile and our ethyl alcohol in the hazardous waste since these metals get reused and dried off they're not going to be thrown away they're going to be put back and we have to make sure they're dry so they don't rust okay okay so this is fake data so this is not any of the math you're using this is just to help you learn how to do it we have some data that you're going to put into your own data table and submit in your lab report so make sure you can follow along you can write these as notes but make sure you're replacing and actually doing the math and showing example calculations with the real data provided 
you're going to want to provide general equations that I'm going to write as well. So just kind of follow through and replace your numbers when you go through in your actual lab report. So our mass of our, unknown, or our known substance here, which is unknown to you because it's fake, is going to be 8.643. We have an initial volume and a final volume. So what we want to do first is find what our total volume was. And that's going to be used by taking volume final vi minus volume initial. So we're going to have 14.79 milliliters minus 1.10 milliliters. And that's going to equal 3.69 milliliters. So that is our total volume of that substance. And the mass, if we remember, density is equal to mass over volume. So we can taste the mass we have here, the 8.643 grams, divided by our volume. And it's going to equal 2.34 grams per milliliter. This is an example of what you would do when you're calculating for the solids that we took. And what you're going to do is do this two more times and average all the three together and then compare it to the theoretical value. With your liquids alone, you don't have to find the total volume because you only have one volume. So now that you've done all that, you're going to take this value and plug it into the percent error equation which, if you remember, is the measured minus the theoretical value, absolute value of, all over theoretical, times 100%. And one thing to note, it'll likely happen in this um, experiment here. If your theoretical value is larger than your measured, you're going to get a negative symbol here. That's why we have these absolute value bars, so even if you get a negative, it's going to be positive ultimately. Make sure you also are following your significant figures here. So we had uh, three significant figures and four significant figures. So we're going to round to three here when we're dividing. So just make sure you keep track.